In this video, we're going to use a Maxwell relation to look at the correction for non-ideal behavior of gases in the standard state entropy. So we have our S bar here, which is our molar entropy, you know, noted by the bar up top that it is a molar quantity. And then we have our S with the little superscript kind of degree sign there being the standard state molar entropy. So that is molar and standard state being at one bar of pressure and 298 Kelvin. But if you calculate the molar entropy of a gas at 1 bar and 298 Kelvin, there will be a slight discrepancy between that and the standard state molar entropy because there's a difference between these two, and that's the standard state assumes that the gas is going to behave ideally. So if you take the standard state minus the molar entropy at the same conditions, then you're going to get what this correction for the non-ideality or non-ideal behavior of the gas is at standard state conditions. So how can we calculate this purple quantity here that we're going to figure out below? Well, let's construct a thermodynamic cycle here. We have a gas which is at one bar of pressure, 298 Kelvin. And then we have, we can decompress that to very low pressure at the same temperature. So decompress it isothermally and or expand it isothermally. And then going from here to here, we can expand, uh, compress that gas from that very low pressure back up to one bar of pressure, but as if it was an ideal gas. And that'll be the same thing as taking it from a non-ideal gas at standard state to an ideal gas at standard state. Okay, so in order to do this, we need to calculate the entropy changes during these two conditions here, and then we add up those entropy changes, and they'll give us the net result as if we went through line three up here. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, this first one here. So we're going to have S bar at low pressure minus S bar at one bar of pressure. That is going to be equal to, well, we can integrate. We went from one bar of pressure, so one bar, up down all the way down to some very, very low pressure, approaching zero, approaching zero bars. And the difference in entropy along that change would be the partial derivative of entropy with respect to pressure at constant temperature because we're doing this isothermally so the temperature is constant and integrate that with respect to pressure. So that would be the most straightforward way to calculate that. Um, because of the signs here, you know, this value of pressure is higher than that one. Generally we integrate from a low limit to a high limit so we can switch that around pretty easily. In order to switch the limits of integration we just need to switch the sign on our integral so we can see that that's the integral from uh, this low pressure up to one bar of dot 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 the same integral that we had here. Okay, so that's that's the entropy change during uh, process one here, and then process two. That's going to be our final state is the standard state, so that's going to be the standard entropy minus the initial conditions, which is the molar entropy at that low pressure. So that as well is going to be the integral from our final pressure, which is going to be one bar, and our to our initial pressure, which is that low pressure, which is approaching zero. And this is going to be, again, the partial derivative of entropy with respect to pressure at constant temperature, dp. But there's a useful Maxwell relation that we can use to help simplify this situation. And that is that the partial derivative of entropy with respect to pressure at constant temperature is going to be equal to the negative of and this is, if this is the molar entropy, this will be the molar volume over here. The derivative of the molar entropy, so 
is equal to the negative derivative of molar volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure. And I need to go back and make sure that I'm indicating that these are derivatives of molar entropy with respect to pressure, just to be safe and cover our bases. Okay, so we're gonna have that. And then that is going to make our integral down here minus integral from P low up to one bar, switching the sign because of this negative sign here. It's gonna be derivative of molar volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure integrated with respect to pressure. Okay, now in order to get the entropy change during process three, process three is just process one plus process two. So we just need to add up the entropy change during process one, this right here, and add that to the entropy change during process two, which is this line right here. So we add those two together and we'll get the entropy change during process three. So that's going to be our molar entropy at standard state minus the corresponding non-ideal gas at one bar is going to equal. Okay, so we have a minus sign here when we had this derivative of entropy with respect to pressure. That minus sign is going to get multiplied by another minus sign when we have uh, this derivative here. So that's going to be both of these limits of integration are the same limits, so we can add those integrals together. We're going to have from P low up to one bar. And we're going to have the derivative of molar volume with respect uh, to temperature at constant pressure of an ideal gas. So I'm going to say V bar ID for ideal minus the same derivative for the non-ideal gas. And that's going to be integrated with respect to pressure. Okay, so this is the integral that we have to solve now. Um, there are some hints that we have thus far that we can use. First one is going to be that for an ideal gas, PV bar equals RT. So PV equals NRT, or PV bar equals RT, dividing by N on both sides. So for an ideal gas, the molar volume is going to be RT over P. Okay, so we can use that. And for the non-ideal gas, we can use the compressibility factor Z, which we defined in the series on the virial equation and non-standard states of gases. And that we can define. So our compressibility factor Z is going to be PV bar over RT. And for an ideal gas, this quantity is 1. You can see we would define, we divide PV bar by RT and get 1, dividing both sides by RT there. And then if we do the virial expansion on top of that, you get 1 plus the second virial coefficient as a function of temperature times over RT times P plus dot dot dot, you get more terms that would depend on p squared than p cubed, depending on the second, depending on the third and fourth virial coefficients, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, beyond that. Okay, so uh, if we need to take the derivative with respect to temperature of each of these, we have our ideal molar volume here, so differentiating with respect to temperature at constant pressure for our ideal molar volume here. Well, it's linear in temperature, so this derivative with respect to T is just R over P. Okay, and what about our, our non-ideal gas down here? Well, first we can solve for V bar. So V bar, if we multiply both sides by RT over P, we're gonna get RT over P for this first term plus the RTs are going to cancel out and then the P is going to cancel out as well dividing by the P. So we're going to get just B2V of T 
plus dot dot dot, then you would have a term that depends on p, p squared, p cubed, etc. But if we take this derivative here quickly, we'll see that the derivative of molar volume for a non-ideal gas at constant uh, pressure, that's going to be differentiate with respect to t, rt over p, that's just going to be r over p, plus this second virial coefficient t, the second virial coefficient b is a function of temperature, so it has a derivative with respect to temperature, so that's, and it's just a single variable, so that's a total derivative, b2v of t dt. And then there would be more terms which hopefully have smaller and smaller magnitudes uh, at one bar of pressure, hopefully very, very low. Okay, so let's take these two results here, plug them back into this integral. So we're going to have our s standard minus s bar is going to equal the integral from low pressure to one bar of our dv bar dt for ideal cases is r over p minus our case here for non-ideal case non-ideal gases is r over p plus db 2 v of t dt plus extra terms that is integrated with respect to pressure Okay, and we'll notice quickly here that this RP and this minus RP, notice the minus sign, are going to cancel out. So those two are going to disappear. What we're left with is the derivative of the virial coefficient with respect to temperature. And that is not a function of pressure, so we can pull that out of the integral. So we have S, bar, S standard minus S bar is equal to, and since this is going to be a very low pressure now, let's just go ahead and say this is zero. We'll integrate from zero to one bar of pressure of dp, and then we can pull out and multiply that times the derivative of the virial coefficient with respect to temperature. The integral from zero to one of dp is just p, so this just becomes one bar. And our final result that we're going to get is that our standard state molar entropy minus our molar entropy at one bar and 298 Kelvin is just going to be equal to our second virial coefficient. The temperature is 298, so the second virial coefficient evaluated at 298 Kelvin. It's derivative with respect to temperature and that is going to be multiplied times one bar of pressure. So if you're in units of bar, you just do the derivative of the virial coefficient with respect to temperature. If you're in some other unit, you need to convert to whatever a bar is in that unit and multiply this by that factor. But So we see here that the leading effect in how our entropy changes due to our gas being non-ideal depends on how this second virial coefficient changes with temperature and that's going to be the dominant dominant effect in how our entropy changes so our standard state it's again a mole of gas at one bar of pressure 298 kelvin and it was assumed to be some type of ideal gas so going from the non-ideal to the ideal gas leads us to this fairly straightforward solution here just depending on what the second virial coefficient of that gas is at 298 kelvin